they're like, that'd be cool. And so they just asked me. That's cool. I, I know I'm friends with uh, Chris Sinzak. So he, yes, uh, super nice I used to work guy. with him. Yeah, super nice guy. So did you play any music or were you just yeah, yeah. there to speak? So they have this thing called Rare Hair um, in Nashville. And so I think it was, they used Rare Hair as the, the pre party, if, I, if I've got it right. So the <laughs> night the night before Rock and Pod, we had, yeah. So I got to sing and they said, you know, we know your country, but do you, do you know any rock songs? I'm like, <laughs> don't tell anybody, but I kind of like ACDC. And, uh, oh, yeah. So I sang Who Made Who. <laughs> That's cool, man. It was what, what, cool. Song, what, what song did you sing again? Say that again. Uh, who Made Who? Who Made Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's really awesome. I, you know, I was uh, going on Spotify and I pulled up your record. It's so cool. I ain't done singing yet. Yeah, it's a good one. I'm proud of it. Uh, that song, actually, uh, there's, is, is the title track of, of an EP. And the EP is, uh, you know, all it's five songs on uh, three of them I co-wrote. And then the Ain't Done Singing Yet, I co-wrote. And it's it's actually number 89 on the country music charts right now. Oh, cool. So is it easy to find the co-writers? I've never written a song before. Is that a, do you pick uh, and choose? It, it's easy. Uh, everybody in Nashville wants to write, um, you know, but it, it's hard to get the good ones to write. <laughs> everybody's a songwriter but the question is are you a good one <laughs> oh nice how long have you been in nashville for about well 30 years but uh you know i haven't you know i've just moved back to nashville i've been here for about seven months this time but i've been in and out of nashville for 30 years but oh, i've lived in, i've lived in alabama and florida and africa you know i've lived in that 30 years i've kind of been all over the place too oh okay that's cool uh originally you're from kentucky is that right well, it, originally, I am from Kentucky. Owensboro, Kentucky is my hometown, but I was born in Wisconsin. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I, I lived in Phoenix. I've lived in Baltimore. <laughs> I've, I've lived everywhere, but Owensboro, <laughs> Kentucky is my home, yeah. You, you sound like that uh, Johnny Cash song, You're like, I've been everywhere, man, you know? Yeah, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's my song. I know that song. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Um, it, I want to talk about the real world and all that stuff. I, I definitely, uh, there's a couple more questions about your album. Was it easy picking out the single? I mean, I'm assuming this, it's your single. The I, I ain't done singing yet. Did you guys? Do you know that was going to be a good song? I mean, it's really super catchy. I'm glad you love it. Uh, the next song on there is called Alabama, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, yes. and it's it's even more it's even more catchy. But I knew that ain't done singing yet was going to be um, the first song because it's it's my comeback song. Uh, I was literally standing in the shower and, and I thought, well, I mean, I guess you're done singing country music. You hadn't done it for a long time and you're not really making any efforts to do it. And so I guess you're done. And I stood there in the shower, mad at myself. I'm like, no, nah, man, you love doing that. Mm. Get back. Just 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 start again. And so I answered my own question. I said, I guess you're done. It's like, no, I ain't done singing yet. And I thought, that's the song. There's your comeback song. And so we wrote it. And uh, it, it's actually really awesome it's a driving song i love songs yeah. that are f fast with a lot of energy i don't i mean i like slow songs too but you know this right. song, i want to i want to have a party when you listen to music you want to have a party all you heavy metal people you know that you know? <laughs> exactly you know there's, there's like, no slow there's no slow heavy metal songs so. <laughs> yeah we call those ballads you know yeah the, well, we call board. them ballads too. i just never heard of, of uh, a heavy metal ballad <laughs> oh true so true yeah yeah <laughs> it's, Keep going, it's I'm sorry. driving it's just it's really it's driving you've heard it it's got a lot of energy and it's it's you know it's a party and so but it's you know i ain't done singing yet here i am i'm not done i'm not done living and growing and doing all the stuff so let's go and it's so it's so high when energy have, when you have that 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 song lyric in your head can you just pick up acoustic guitar and start strumming along to what you think um good writers can and and there yeah. are times that there are times that i can but uh no uh you know, modestly and humbly, I, I had a, a really good co-writer. I told him my idea mm -hmm. and he actually started, uh, you know, pounding out. He's, he's a Grammy award winning songwriter. Aaron Ray Tier oh. wrote with Lady Gaga. He's got a Grammy award for Lady Gaga's movie. Whoa, um, that's amazing. Yeah, so, yeah, he's amazing. And uh, he happens to be from Danville, Kentucky. And uh, he's, he's a great artist and songwriter. And so I got I got connected with him through a friend and. Uh, and. Uh, I told him my idea, you know, I said, you know, I ain't done singing yet. I want to write a, a killer song with lots of energy as my comeback song. So he started, mm. you know, hammering out kind of a chord progression. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of what I want to say. But 
I want to say it more like this. And so uh-huh. when, when, when he heard the final record, he was like, man, you took the <laughs> energy way up. I'm like, yeah, I mean, we wrote a good song, but it was kind of like, you know, great lyrics and just kind of grooving. And then we went in the studio and I said, I want it to, I want it to kick. I want it to rock. Mm-hmm. And so the musicians are like, okay. And you know, boom, it's, it's high energy. Everybody go stream it on Spotify. John Brennan, I ain't done singing yet. And then tweet me and tell me if you like it. Cause, uh, Tweet your radio station. Tell them to play it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Do you have – so how many albums have you done in the past? Are they available? Uh, you know, or can people find them somewhere? So I recorded one a while ago and never really put it out. I showed it – I sold it at my shows. And, um, you know, some of my diehard fans have it, but the general public really doesn't have it. And I'm I'm actually talking to my distribution label right now, and uh, we're going to repackage it and, and put it oh. out as, as new music. So – yeah, we'll have the new songs that are that are you know recent, and then we're gonna put the old stuff out as if it was new because you know you spend money on recording stuff and it's good, you know, yeah. it's, and uh, you still want people to hear it. So I got a lot of music that's getting ready to be <laughs> uh, put out there. Are you planning on touring this stuff? This music? Yeah, I hope I hope so. Um, I've got actually uh, I I can make an announcement here on your podcast. Uh, nice. Uh, my first full blown ninety minute John Brennan concert in 22 years okay we'll be in tulsa oklahoma on may the 20th at a place called the shrine so everybody from tulsa knows where the shrine is it's a very popular uh music venue and on may 20th i'm gonna do a full-blown 90 minute john brennan concert it's the first one i've done in a lot of years and so i've done a lot of singing recently but usually it's you know a small set here or two or three songs there it's never really been uh, 90 minute set for, you know, of all me for a really long time. So this is my big comeback concert in Tulsa, Oklahoma on May 20th at the shrine. So, wow. That's cool. A, yeah. Make a road trip. Come on. Uh, how do you prepare for your first, uh, your first gig in 20 something years? Are you, you start nervous? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, yeah. Uh, no, I'm not nervous, but, um, uh, you know, artists they love to be on a microphone and on a stage you know they just do i'm gonna gonna be straight with you they 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 like to be the center of attention they like to be on stage that's why they're a musical artist so that along with that comes confidence you don't want to get on stage if you're not confident about what you're about to do so Mm -hmm. you start early yeah you get nervous when you're not sure of what's going on oh my goodness Mm -hmm. am i going to remember the words or i don't really know this song or what key is that song in that just creates a lot of uh it takes the fun right out of it, but it, it creates a lot of nervous apprehension and you don't want to take the stage that way. So you start early. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, I made the set list for the show, you know, two months ago and the musicians already have it. They're already practicing. So, you know, we're still uh, many, many weeks away from the show and I can tell you what song number 10 is right now and can tell <laughs> you what, you know, the last song is and the first song is. And uh, you know, that way you walk into it with a lot of confidence. Uh, not only is the show better, um, but you also enjoy it a lot more. Oh yeah. That's so cool. Are you going to do any cover songs or is it just, strictly... Oh yeah. I'll, I'm going to do, uh, about, about half our original songs and about four of them I wrote. And then, you know, I'm, I'm going to do cover songs. Now, when I say cover songs, uh, I love Alan Jackson and Garth Brooks, but mm-hmm. I'm not doing any of them. I'm, you know, when, when I do cover songs, I kind of do the old standard songs like, mm-hmm. uh, Hank Williams, you know, let's go honky tonkin or, you know, I'll do, I'm going to do uh take it easy by the Eagles. Oh, good. Um, uh, if you're a Steve Earl fan, I'm going to do guitar town, you know? So uh, of course, having lived in Alabama for 12 years and, you know, you know, we're going to do Skinner sweet home, Alabama. And, uh, yes. um, and then, ha- you know, being in Tulsa, being in Tulsa, I've never performed this song live, but uh, I'm going to have to have the crowd. I think they'll know it by heart. They'll help me out a little bit, but we're going to do Tulsa time. Oh, cool. Do you, um, do you listen to new country at all? Or are you just more old school? I I have it on. I have to be honest. I don't enjoy it as much as I enjoy country music from the seventies, eighties and nineties. Um, I was listening to it today, you know, just as an artist trying to be relevant again in the genre, you want to be familiar with what's going on. And, uh, so I'm listening to it and I'm like, man, that, that what they're calling country sounds a whole lot like eighties rock and roll right now. You know, the singer has a twang, which I know a lot about twangy singing, you know, because <laughs> I am one. But the music doesn't resemble country music. It resembles 80s rock music, the MTV era. You know, mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. It, it just it just if you listen to only the music and not the singing, 
then uh, tell me, tell me if you don't think, you know, today's country music sounds like eighties rock music, which I like, Yeah, but I just think that I just think they need to call it something different. It's right. Not, that's a good point. You know, that's just my opinion. Um, I do like it. I don't love it. Uh, I love seventies, <laughs> eighties and nineties country. And I like today's country, but um, you know, I liked eighties rock and roll. So, you know, it's not mm -hmm. my passion. It's just something I do, I, you know, familiar with and sing along to it, but it's not, it's not the love of my life. Uh, one of my best friends, Kurt Thomas, he's a singer songwriter. Um, he kind of helped me start the show and he's a country uh, singer songwriter who travels to Nashville and writes. His name's Kurt Thomas. Uh, he grew up with Zach Brown, but his oh, yeah. you, you, I think you guys get along great. I mean, you, when your music sounds a lot like his music. So I just had to, awesome. had to say that. Uh, and, wow. and you know, one thing I was wanting to talk about your album, the last song is the here in the real world. Yeah. Uh, like, is that kind of a play on words? You know, you'd be in the, from the real world. Well, that was Alan Jackson's. If it wasn't his first big hit, it was maybe his second or third. Oh. It was, it was one of his big hits early on. And so he had a song called midnight in Montgomery. And it was about, it was after here in the real world and maybe a song or two after here in the real world was released. And so, he had a video to it. It's about going to visit Hank Williams grave in Montgomery, Alabama. And so the video is at the grave of Hank Williams in Montgomery, Alabama. And he pulls up in his tour bus and, you know, back in the day, they don't do this anymore. Uh, they want to drive down the streets without, you know, anybody knowing who's in the bus, but they used to put their name on the bus, you know, <laughs> on the side or, you know, like old, uh, like Greyhound buses, they'd put above the windshield, the city that it was yes. you know bound for. Well, you know, artists would put their name, you know, Oak Ridge Boys or, you know, Alan Jackson, that they would put their name up there where that city, you know, goes. Well, that's in and I noticed in the video it said uh the real world. And and the song here in the real world, you know, the guy doesn't get the girl always, but he was saying, Here in the real world, my bus is my real world. And mm -hmm. I saw that video. It was before I went on the real world in nineteen ninety three. So I'm watching this video in 1992 and I'm thinking, you know, if I ever get on that silly show called The Real World, they keep asking me to be on. It'd be cool to sing that song here in the <laughs> real world. And yeah. so I, I did. I sang it on the show 30 years ago. And then I sang it at all my concerts um, that I did in the 90s because people wanted to, you know, hear the song that I sing on the show. It's Boot Scoot and Boogie and Here in the Real World. And so I did those covers during my concerts and uh, I thought, you know what? This is my comeback EP. Go ahead and put it on there. So. <laughs> you know, I was I was 12 years old when when you're on the real world. Uh, I'm not trying to make anybody feel old or anything, but no, I was only 18. So I, oh, you, you know, see, there we go. Yeah, I was uh, the youngest person ever to be cast on the real world. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, yeah, 18 well, the, years. Old, I was right out of high school. Um, oh, that's interesting. What did your family think of you you traveling like that and going on this big? They big thought I was crazy, show. but you know, my mom and dad supported my decision to go. Uh, if anything, they kind of urged me to because, you know, <laughs> they, they both grew up without, you know, tons of really cool opportunities like that. And uh, they were kind of like, hey, if this happens, this is a crazy thing. And, you know, life is full of opportunities, but this is a strange one. So why don't you go check it out, you know, see see what, what, what what's being laid out for you. And uh, they were encouraging. So my mom and dad are awesome people. And, That's awesome. Uh, I was very supportive. They were they were very supportive. Did you have to like? What'd you do? Send in a videotape back then? Like, what was the deal? No, they they I never applied. They asked me to be on it because uh, they wanted a country music singer. They wanted an aspiring country music singer. Uh, so they came to Nashville looking for someone just like me. And they found me downtown Nashville, and, and they said, uh, "Are you a singer?" I was like, "Bro, everybody here's a singer. You're in Nashville. <laughs> Where are you from?" He's like, "Well, I'm from Los Angeles." <laughs> right. We're trying to, you know, we're trying to find a person for the show. Surely you saw the first one we did in New York. It, you know, everybody, these kids live in a house and, and it's on MTV, you know, trying to, you know, yeah. get me to go, oh, that's awesome. I'm like, and well, that's it. I mean, they just, they, they live in a house and they talk and they argue. And I'm like, well, I'm not an actor. I'm a singer. He's like, no, you're not listening. There's no script. Like they just do whatever. And it's a, it's a reality show. I'm like, and of course my answer is what's a reality show. OK, this is the first yeah, it's one. The first, yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like thinking this, I might have even said it. I don't know. I'm thinking this is the stupidest idea for a show. And 
And so I'm like, no, man, I'm not interested. And, and uh, he said, please, man, we need a country singer. We need, you know, somebody that's like your age, somebody that's not known as a singer. You've not made it. You're aspiring. And, and uh, I was like, well, tell me about it. And what are we getting paid? And uh, he's like, oh, well, they barely pay you. I'm like, Great. <laughs> like barely, like barely was, was, you know, generous. That, that was, that was, um, and you know, I thought, well, Hey, MTV is really popular. I mean, not to me, I don't watch it, but yeah, it's really but, popular. I could be famous and come back to Nashville with all of that attention. And, you know, um, I don't always tell people I was, I was the Kardashians before there was the Kardashians. I was survivor before true. there was survivor. I mean, that's true. Um, we had that kind of fame and notoriety in the nineties. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, we don't we don't have the money that Jersey Shore and Kardashians got paid. But, <laughs> yeah, but you're the OGs of it. You know, and it's oh, it's so <laughs> <laughs> it's so random though that you got picked out of uh, Nashville of all the people. I mean, it's well, they wanted a country singer, and I think they wanted a male, and they wanted somebody that you know young. dressed dressed like Garth Brooks. You know, they wanted hat and boots. It was 1992. You got to think back what was happening in the world in 1992. Everybody was buying country music. Didn't matter if you like country music or not. The whole world went country. So MTV's like, we need a country guy. And uh, they found me. <laughs> Isn't it weird that MTV never played country music videos back then? I mean, as big was, as it was. I was the only, and to this day, I'm one of very few country singers that have ever been on MTV. Um, wow. You know, uh, and much less sang on MTV. Yeah, I never had a music video that they played, but they kind of stopped playing music videos anyway. And I found out recently, actually, at Rock and Pod, they were talking about one of the reasons was people in the 90s, you know, we, we flicked channels. That's what we did. We just we, we sat down, we started flicking. So people yep. usually ended up on MTV. I mean, it's kind of a cool place to end up on in the 80s and 90s. It's where you were. And then they'd watch a couple videos. And then if one came on, they didn't really care a lot about. They'd switch the channel. And MTV said, Okay, we're getting people for like seven, eight minutes. We got to get people for 30 minutes or 60 minutes at a time. So we got to mm. start making shows rather than three minute videos. Mm. And so they came up with an idea to do, they wanted a scripted um, soap opera like drama and they didn't have the budget for it. So John Murray and Mel Mary Ellis Bunham, uh, Mary Ellis, they were TV, TV producers, but they were partners. And Mary Ellis actually worked with soap operas, big, 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 big soap operas. And she just said, yeah, you don't have the funding to do what you're talking about doing. But my partner, John Murray, and I have an idea to do this real life thing, kind of a experiment where you put people and you don't give them a script. You let them just be themselves. And MTV went with it and mm -hmm. did it in New York and then found me in Nashville and sent me to Los Angeles to do season two. I, I love when you guys... Uh when you guys whenever i pick you up like don't they go to your town and stuff like dominic and yeah. uh, tammy i love yeah. dominic by the way in the show he yeah. just cracks me up going back and forth. what was it like uh living with and aaron too all these people that you know I mean, yeah. that's a huge question but well it's a simple answer and i get it all i've gotten it for 30 years what was it like yeah. living with dominic what was it like living with tammy what was it like what was it like what was it like here's what it right. was like it was like exactly what you saw on television. It was it, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it was it was hilarious. Okay, yeah, it was very stressful. Everything that you saw on TV unfold is what it was like. Just to be honest with you, mm. uh, it, you know th there were some heated arguments that were tense, and there were moments everybody wanted to pull their hair out and kill their roommate. That's what it was like. There were times, you know, Dominic made you laugh until you hit the floor, and that's what it was like too. I mean, it was just. <laughs> I'll have to say when I've watched the shows and I don't, you know, you don't really like to sit around and watch video of yourself or, or yes. watch, see pictures yeah. of yourself. Yeah. So I don't really sit around and watch the real world, but, uh, but when I did <laughs> see it, I'll have to say it was a very good representation of what it was like. I mean, what was on TV is what it was like. So they did a good job editing. You're saying, I mean, they didn't, they did uh, a job and... editing. I will say that. <laughs> if you, uh, you know, you don't you don't show the times where you pulled over and, and pumped gas. That's boring. Right. right. You know, the highlights and, and, and all the spectacular things that happened. Uh, they couldn't possibly not edit it. They had to edit it. And, you know, they edited a 30 minute show into 22 minutes because of commercials. Right. So, you know, they, they had to they had to move along. So I will say it was it was. It was handily edited, but it was true to what happened. It was true to what happened. 
Uh, it, you know, I was, I was watching some of it yesterday. I'm going back. I, mean, I grew up watching it, and I haven't seen it in years. Goldie, you guys mentioned her. Like, you know, she's going to start a fan club, and you're like, I she don't did. know about – She did. Whatever she did. happened to Goldie? Is she, is she still uh, around? She's and... doing great, living in Owensboro, Kentucky. She's got eight kids and 49,000 grandkids, and uh, <laughs> she's she's – Awesome. One of my very best friends. I love her like she's family. And uh, actually, uh, just over a year ago, we did a show together. Oh, you did? Yeah. So, do, so she 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 performs. I was thinking she was just yeah. like, kind of like a manager kind of thing or something. No, she's she's actually a comedian and a singer. And uh, she's a local she's a local celebrity up in my hometown. And um, now she's she sings and tells jokes and she MCs And I mean, she's quite the personality. Yeah, she's she's doing awesome actually oh that's cool uh, does she still have the uh john brenner uh um uh, uh, fan club no no but it's so funny because i called her recently and i'm like you know did we have a database of all of my fan <laughs> club members because yeah. you know i'd love to get back in touch with them and say hey all these years later you supported me and now i've got an album out and maybe you'd be a candidate to support me again and be a fan and call your radio stations and so I dug out all of my old fan mail and we're going to, I'm going to try to, you know, like use the return addresses and this is, <laughs> cool. no, this is, this is before Microsoft Excel spreadsheets. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so I have a stack of paper. Okay. With the information on it and a three and a half inch floppy disk. And that's where the information is stored. And so you're trying, you know, you're going to all these computer shops, walk into Staples and you're like, you got a machine that can open this. And they're like a, a kid working at uh staples or uh best buy actually said to me what is that and i said, <laughs> I said this, this is a floppy disk he's like what do you do with it i'm like <laughs> that's well it. what do you do with it you put it in the computer and you open files he's like oh it's like a flash drive i'm like kind of go get your manager i need to talk to someone that's not 12 <laughs> right right <laughs> that's hilarious they have companies i think that can do that uh where you just send it off i i, I sent off some old vhs tapes and they they were able to upload it for me so yeah, i don't know that that's interesting what this is a kind of a lame question but after the real world aired what was it like going back to nashville i mean we i mean you, you, everybody recognizes yeah. you now yeah uh i mean I, when i say we had kardashian fame i mean we really did I couldn't go anywhere without people going, that's the guy from the real world, get a picture, get an autograph. And mm. I was famous for living with Dominic. Like I wasn't famous for being <laughs> in a movie. I wasn't famous because I had any, you know, popular music on the radio. I was famous because I was on this ridiculously crazy show on MTV. And, uh, you know, it was, it was a big hit. SNL did a, did a big spoof on us. I mean, it was, mm. it, was it was very popular in culture and, uh, yeah, I mean, I was famous. Uh, and so I, I started touring and people would come hear me sing just because I was a guy from the real world. And, um, you know, I tried to get the record labels in Nashville to, you know, cash in on the fame because half the battle of being a new artist is, you know, people even knowing who you are and knowing your name. Everybody knew my name. That's John from the real world. True story. I mean, everybody yes. knows me. So, uh, yeah. I still get people ask me to say true story. I still use I use that. There was no such thing as a hashtag back then. Okay. Yeah. It, you know, it was pound sign, right? Pound sign. Right. That's not a pound sign. It's a hashtag. It's like, what's a hashtag? That's the pound sign. <laughs> right. You know, you say pound to, to, you know, the kids like, they're like, why is he calling a hashtag a pound? It's like, yeah. You know, <laughs> yes. like, but yeah. So, I mean, it, I had people had a hard time understanding what a reality star was. Okay. So, I, you know, I literally had a record producer that's a big, 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 big time uh, record label person. He's like, OK, so you're an MTV star and now you want to be a country music singer. I'm like, no, I'm a country <laughs> music singer. And that's why I was on the show to begin with. Exactly. Yeah. Well, how am I going to make a country hit maker out of an MTV star? It's like, are you listening? You're, <laughs> you're... And so, you know, they steered away from me and. uh and, and, you know, fast forward 20 years and 30 years, now everybody on a reality show, if you're on American Idol or Survivor or The Voice, you get a record deal because you're famous. And it's like, yeah. hey, in 1993, I was telling you that reality stars, you know, should get record contracts. And Wow, that's and a get, great point. Well, it, it, you know, it's a great point, but it's, it's, been, <laughs> it's, been, a fr it's been a frustrating issue for me. Mm -hmm. Did you go, uh, were you... I thought I read somewhere where you're leading you're leading worship music or something. Did you do that yeah. after the real world? 
was for, that the... for 20 years. So from 1993 until about 2000, I did country music. And then, mm-hmm. um, then I actually was part of a church plant in my hometown and I was leading worship music there. And then I uh, moved to Birmingham, Alabama, where I was leading worship music at a church and then Tampa Bay, Florida. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I kept doing music. I was just doing music in church. And now, uh, I um, I just put that on pause and I thought, you know what, if you're ever going to do country music again, you better do it because you're getting old, boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I grew up playing in church, too. So that's something that's really, really neat. And it's a, that's a that's a job. I mean, lean worship. Oh, it's a full time job. Yeah. Uh, so going back to your album, uh, so you're going to tour. Uh, is that what else you got going on? Oh, the real world. Didn't you guys get back together and do? We like did. A, we yeah, did so- a homecoming. <laughs> Uh, you know, on Paramount Plus, um, you know, Viacom owns CBS, CMT, MTV, all this. They, it's all one big happy family. So our reunion was not on MTV. It's on um, Paramount Plus. And uh, they did a re, uh, real world homecoming, they called it, for uh, the New York season. They did one for the Los Angeles season. They did one for the uh, uh, Miami, uh, what's it, New Orleans. New Orleans was a big um homecoming too and so um yeah i apologize plus i apologize not watching these events i'm i'm, I'm definitely gonna go right. check it out uh, what, what is it <laughs> is it a weird vibe like you're like we've done this before but now we're all older and mature you know yeah yeah well you would think but if you see our homecoming you realize that older yes mature no and uh, okay you that know, makes good TV, you know. Yeah, it, well, for you it does. For for me, it made for, for me. I mean, we're back in the same exact house we lived in. Same oh, exact house. Oh wow! Okay. With, with David and Tammy having the same conversations and uh, the mm, same fights, yes. and it's like, hey, you know, I'm 48. I was I was the youngest one 30 years ago. I'm still the youngest one, and I'm still the most <laughs> level-headed one. And you guys are like 50 something. When are you gonna When are you gonna grow up and act like you're a 50 year old adult? You know, <laughs> right? You're still acting like we're 19 years old. You know, having these silly arguments. You're still friends with uh, Beth. You've been friends with her for a while, right? Yeah, After I mean, the I'm, show? I'm very close with Beth, and um, actually, I'm very close with all of them. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm in touch with every cast member. Um, I'm in touch with Beth often, and Irene, and. Uh, um, Dominic didn't come to our homecoming. He didn't choose to be part of that or Aaron also. Yeah, they vote. never do. Yeah, they don't do much on MTV, right? Well, they they moved on to kind of, you know, professional careers. And, you know, being the guy on the real world was not, you know, super, you know, congruent with, you know, the professional careers that they have. And so oh, they, okay. it, yeah. I would have loved to have had them there. But I got to see him and hang out with him after anyway. So we kind of reconnected off camera. So it was oh, okay. just as good. Yeah, uh, that's good. And I'm kind of going back to the real world. Last question about it, but when when you do true story, how did that happen? Did they get you just so to sing that there was part? a There was a day where they were they wanted you to do the intro. This is the true story of seven strangers picked to live in a loft to find oh, okay, out yes, what yeah. happens when people stop being polite and start being real. The real world. <laughs> So they played me the first, the New York one. They're like, okay, so this is what we're doing for your season. So we just want you to sing it in your most nasally, twangy, Dwight Yoakam voice. And I'm like, okay, all right, all right. This is the true story of seven <laughs> strangers. And they're like, they're they're doubling over, like falling on the ground laughing. I'm like, <laughs> dude, if you're going to laugh at me, I'm not going to do it anymore. They're like, yeah, yeah. We, we got what we needed. We just needed two words. I'm like, fine. Felt kind of weird doing it anyway. <laughs> Right, so right. when the show came out, it was true story. You know. Oh, that's so interesting. Yeah, you know, I'm laughing because it's I've never heard the intro sang, sung before. That's 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 great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, it's John, man, I, mean, I get asked to sing that. Uh, you know, at every concert I ever did, it's like say true story, say Beth, Beth, <laughs> Beth, Beth, <laughs> Beth <laughs> on the <laughs> hey, are you gonna do that on your next show? Just you know, throw out a little hash hashtags or not hashtags, you know, whatever. Uh, at my concert, I yes, usually sir. end up saying ridiculous stuff on the microphone. <laughs> yeah, that would be cool if you got to stream it so uh, fans could see it. You ever think about that? Yeah, you think about that, but you know, the thing is, um, if if they see it streamed, generally it's it's hard to get it to sound quality. You right, know, right. It re- relies on the internet and the lighting and 
it just ends up looking pretty mediocre. And then they're like, yeah, I saw a John Brennan concert online. It was kind of like, you mm. know, couldn't hear real good, couldn't see real good. And yeah. then they don't want to come when they come to your town. So you, you, you want them to say, how awesome was John Brennan? Well, you got to come and find out. <laughs> do you enjoy being online, like on different social media platforms? Or do you have people handlers that do it for you? No, I don't have handlers. I am I am my people. I uh I um uh, I am the interactor on there. But uh I enjoy being online, but you know, everybody now they're saying, Oh, you gotta get on TikTok. Well, you know, you got you gotta have a YouTube. I have a YouTube channel. Everybody should oh. go subscribe. I have a TikTok, but I'm not trying to be, you know, the next uh, you know, uh YouTube sensation or TikTok sensation. I, I wanna mm-hmm. be I wanna be the singer and artist that I am. But it's all these tools that you got to use nowadays. And uh, I'm not the biggest fan of TikTok. I really like Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. But I'm on TikTok. And, uh, you know, follow me. Check me out. I'm working at it. Mm. I, I love your your drive and passion, you know, of all these years of just, I mean, it's not, I mean, I've, I've watched you when I was 12 being singing country. First time I heard Boots Goon Boogie. I think I already mentioned this, but it was because of you. Uh, just that oh, drive yeah. and passion is amazing, you know. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, it's so funny because the, the artist, Brooks and Dunn, Brooks and, and, Dunn uh, yeah. and the songwriter, Ronnie Dunn, uh, he, I met him in Nashville. He's like, you, mm. you sang my song on MTV. I'm like, yeah, oh. you should pay me some of your royalties for making your song famous. <laughs> like, you did a good job on it. I'm like, right. So and, yeah. know, he's one of my very favorite singers and Is nicest he? guys ever. Oh, yeah. Nicest guy. And, yeah, he's one of my favorite singers and one of the best singers that's ever hit country music, in my opinion. Oh, yes, um, sir. Yeah, that's awesome. Really, really, really good. And yeah, so he was, it was, it's neat, neat meeting those guys. And, you know, Tim McGraw, I met Tim McGraw. He's like, oh. did I see you on TV? I'm like, yeah, you did. And he's <laughs> like, dude, uh, uh, you know, Shooter Jennings, uh, Waylon's son, Shooter Jennings, who's an award winning, Grammy award winning producer out in LA. He, uh, uh, so he grew up in Nashville, then he moved to LA. Uh, uh-huh. He's a fan of the show, and he got a hold of me on Instagram. He's like, "Are you going to be on these OG reunions?" And I'm like, "Is this Shooter Jennings?" He's like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, "All right, let me tell you a story." Like, I sing country music because my dad loved your dad singing. That's the mm-hmm. reason I even got into country music. So, like, Shooter and I have become good friends now. So it's cool. I mean, you yeah. meet these people, you 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 know, are suddenly reminded that you're on television, and people see it. Famous people uh-huh. see it. Fans see it, normal people see it, and then ridiculous superstars. Also, I heard Kim Kardashian's a big show. She actually wanted to be on The Real World. Oh and wow! Okay, she was running. So then she, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians, the biggest show ever, and she's the biggest influencer on social media in the world right now. And so, you know, she kind of got bigger than The Real World, but uh, she's a big fan of The Real World. Oh, and Elton, oh, wow. Elton John, Elton John was at a benefit, and he's like, some of the Real World people were there because it was a benefit for Pedro, who was on the San Francisco yes. show. Uh, yes. Well, it wasn't a benefit for him. He had passed away, and they were honoring MTV's handling of uh, Pedro's uh, death from uh, from from AIDS and HIV. Mm. And so, uh, Elton John was the guest, and he was sitting at the piano. Oh, the real world is that is that is that cowboy from Kentucky here? Oh, that is, you know that, that is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> and I wasn't there, but lots of yeah. real world folks were. And, and he's, you know, I'm like, they're Elton texting John me. Asked Elton, about you. Elton John just mentioned your name. He wanted to know if you're here. I'm like. Tell him how open for him on tour or something, yeah, you know? <laughs> something like that. Wow, wow, that's 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 amazing. Elton John was asking about you. Wow, <laughs> that's good. Maybe John, well, I appreciate you being on the show. This means the world. Yeah. I I grew up watching well, you, man. I feel like you're an uncle of mine or something. Like I'm seeing yeah, you so many years. Everybody I meet, they're like, "Did we go to school together?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> are you from here? I'm like, "No." <laughs> and I usually say, "How old are you?" And if they're anywhere between thirty-five and fifty-five, I'm like. Did you watch the real world on MTV? And they're like, John, I know you. Like, yeah. <laughs> hey, can you and mention? It's, it's cool because they re- they really do know me. I mean, they don't know a role I was playing. They really do know what my personality is like. So that that's cool. Yes. Yeah. So can you uh, remind people one more time when your show is? You said that's coming soon, right? Yeah. So uh, May twentieth in Tulsa, Oklahoma, at the Shrine. So you can buy tickets. I think now. Uh, or you can buy them at the door, but uh, it may be, hopefully they'll be gone. You won't be able to get them. Uh, sell out. Uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at John Brennan underscore com. So I tried to make it John Brennan dot com, but it's at John Brennan underscore com. And I'm, I'm verified on and Facebook at John Brennan oh. country. It's verified. And I'm not verified on TikTok, but it's at John Brennan dot com on TikTok. And 
um, you know, follow me. That's really me. And I'll interact with you and like all my stuff, whatever, repost me. And I'm trying to go viral here. You know, I'm trying to go, you know. Well, you're verified now. That's that's something, too. I mean, that's cool. I'm not verified Maybe. on TikTok, but I'm working on it. So, but, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. John, man, this has been so cool. Yeah, I really appreciate being on the show. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for asking. And, you know, stay in touch and uh, yes. you know, follow me on social media. We can We can do this again sometime. That sounds great, John. I appreciate it, buddy. Yeah. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, you too. Take care, man. Bye-bye.